West Bank and the South African Guild of Motoring Journalists thank you for 30 years of performance, passion, results, innovation, excitement. 30 years of Car of the Year. The Car of the Year competition is more than just wheels, handling, interiors or performance excitement. The competition is an embodiment of passion and the investment that everybody here makes. It's about the people. Without you, we would not have this legacy. The last three decades would not have been possible and the motoring industry the poorer for it. The Westbank South African Guild of Motoring Journalists Car of the Year competition has grown in stature and importance. Forged in chrome and mounted on iron blocks, it has come to stand as a landmark of motoring excellence. Today, we salute 30 years of passion, a journey that has defined three decades of South African motoring history. 1986 was the year that Dave Clapham got up at a motor industry outing and asked, why don't we have an industry car of the year? The subject under discussion had been the fact that various publications, various broadcast uh, radio slots, TV programs even, had their own car of the year, every year. And Dave Tappen stood up in the audience and said, why don't we have just one car of the year? And I went round the room, one by one, and they all said yes. So we said, okay, we'll take that as a resolution. We will run a car of the year for the industry. Then we went ahead with Coty. We had to explain to some people it wasn't a fragrance. When this concept first came to fruition through the South African Guild of Motoring Journalists, West Bank was very lucky that they had a man called Jock Scott who happened to meet the guys from the Guild, and namely Dave Clapham and Robin Ensley. And they were doing testing of the cars of the year for that particular year at Kailan. Um And he offered us a hamburger. That hamburger turned into 30 odd banquets and all the trivia. And with Jock's vision and knowing that West Bank wanted to be the wheels bank and they wanted to be the dealer bank, it was the perfect opportunity to take on the car of the year. From this humble start was born a rewarding association held together by an intense love of cars and an enthusiastic body of industry professionals. The 80s were huge. With big hair, shoulder pads and VHS tapes came electronic fuel injection, the development of unleaded fuel and car phones. It was a decade of true innovation and we have much to be grateful for. The manufacturers were powerhouses that fueled the economy and our imaginations. The winner of the very first Car of the Year title in 1986 was the Toyota Corolla Twin Cam. This chisel-shaped Corolla brought about the front-wheel drive revolution for Toyota. We actually struggled to, to get Colin Adcock, who was then the MD of Toyota, to come along. And of course the Toyota Corolla won the first evening. And having struggled to get him there, we had to struggle to get him to leave in the evening. He was one of the last to leave. In 1987, the winner was the Mercedes-Benz 260E. The W124, father of the modern-day E-Class, is internationally famous for its longevity and featured one of the lowest drag coefficients of its time. In 1988, the BMW 735i took top spot and we closed the decade in 1989 with a Toyota Corolla GLI exec. They would give us two examples of each car for the banquet. So we could hide one lot away, except the winner, and put the winner wherever you're going to pop it out of the basket. Um, and then they'd come with field glasses to see where we'd park the, and see which one was missing, and, and all that sort of. So we thought, hey, we're going to hire a car. And we sent someone off, we had a name that nobody should know, and they went and rented a car from a rental company down somewhere south in Joburg, and within an hour and a half, I got a phone call from that manufacturer to say, have we won? Is that why you've just hired a car? 
Very difficult to deadpan that one and say, yeah. In the 80s, there were sanctions and there was a, a very limited uh, number of, of cars available on the local market. We had all these numbers of cars like that were pretty much the same model. Like we had a Volkswagen L Jetta and a Jetta GL and then a GLX and then a CSX and then a GLI. Uh, for instance, and the same with Corolla, and the same with the Ford products, which were chosen for car there. We must remember those days we had no imported vehicles. They were just locally produced uh, vehicles. And some of those models were not uh, the up-to-date models. And we had to create opportunities to talk about them. In the 90s, all the car manufacturers once again stepped up to the plate and defined a generation. Car of the year, we're five years old, still the guild's most prestigious event, probably still the most controversial. It's thanks to all of you that the spirit of the motor man South African was kept burning bright. In this decade came ABS braking, and Nigel Mansell drove a Renault to victory in the last official South African Formula One Grand Prix. Nelson Mandela was released, and Google happened to everyone. Everything changed because now suddenly you had all these importers who were offering cars in South Africa and the explosion was just enormous to the point where you've now got over 60 manufacturers offering cars for sale in South Africa. Performance engines suddenly became part and parcel of a modern motor car. The Car of the Year winners all exemplified the energy and enthusiasm of the age. In 1990, it was the BMW 525i. The E34 is still considered one of the most reliable BMWs of all time. The Opel Monza 160 GSI won in 1991. And 1992 saw the Nissan Maxima 300 SE claim the title. The Maxima's 3-liter 24-valve DOHC engine was advanced featuring aluminium cylinder heads, variable intake valve timing and coil-on-plug ignition. In 1993, the winner was the BMW 316i. And in 1994, the Opel Cadet 140. My first car was in fact a car of the year winner, the Opel Cadet 140. So it didn't mean much to me at the time. Little did I know that years later I'd be sitting on the Car of the Year jury and what that meant when a car actually becomes the Car of the Year. The Opel Astra 160 IS claimed top honours in 1995. It was still the days when Opel was owned by Delta Motor Corporation and the Astra F was produced in South Africa. 1996 saw the Audi A4 1.8 win in a spectacular race course announcement. Audi's first occasion when they won, we all trooped down to uh, Gosforth Park. Uh, it was a horse racing course and wondered why we're here. We got out on the balcony and down the, down the track came the whole bunch of cars. I think there were 10 in those days. And Audi came across the line. And when if somebody had come across with the wrong car or jumped the gun, we would have had trouble. And then, in 1997, the BMW 528i. In 1998, the Ford Fiesta Fun grabbed the Car of the Year title. The fourth generation Ford Fiesta was one of the best handling cars in its class. In 1999, we closed off the decade with an Alfa Romeo 156 T-Spark. The 156 had a 10-year production lifespan and over 680,000 were built. The most memorable uh, reveal I've ever seen, I think it was the Alpha 156. And possibly one of the biggest reasons was it was uh, hosted by the most beautiful PR lady of Alpha at that time, long red hair. And she just looked so stylish, the car looked so stylish. The meaning of the car of the year is really to create excitement around cars in the industry with, with the consumers and for a full year you get this continuous publicity around the participants in, uh, in the competition and I think that is very important that cars are not just seen as transport from A to B. People like to be involved with it. And certainly car of the year is also not only about the one vehicle that wins it in the end. 
It is about those finalist vehicles who each represent excellence in their respective segments. I still see vehicles drive around the little Ford that won yonks ago with their big Car of the Year sticker on the back um, window. So it most definitely works for the motor manufacturers and the dealers. Um, it, does, it does a lot for the dealers as well, yes, for sure. We ramped into the year 2000 and the threat of the Y2K bug came and went. USB drives started appearing everywhere and diesel became a phenomenon in the South African motoring scene. At every step of the way, the people in this room, the car makers and the dreamers have made everything we celebrate today a possibility. We mark the decade with the following winners. In 2000, the Renault Clio 1.4 RT was Car of the Year. The second generation Clio featured then unusual construction materials like plastic and aluminium in order to reduce weight. The first diesel car ever to win the Car of the Year title made its appearance in 2001 with the BMW 320D. In 2002, it was the Audi A4 1.9 TDI. The B6 A4 was designed by the world-famous Peter Schreyer. Its 1.9-litre turbo diesel engine featured direct injection technology. In 2003, the VW Polo 1.4 TDI claimed the title. The fourth-generation Polo spawned a new culture of performance diesel tuning with a 1.9 TDI Red Eye becoming a hit with performance-minded enthusiasts. And in 2004, it was the Renault Megane 2 1.9 DCI. The Volvo S40 2.4i took the honours in 2005 and it also won the World Car of the Year title in the same year. In 2006, the Audi A3 Sportback 2.0-litre TFSI. And then, in 2007, the Honda Civic 1.8 VXI sedan, the 8th generation Civic sedan, was for the first time built on a different platform compared to the hatchback. By the time it arrived, there were 16.5 million Civics in the world. 2008 was the year for the Mazda 2 1.5 individual. It was also built on an all-new platform, which featured lightweight materials and reduced overall dimensions. 2009 closed out the decade with a Honda Accord 2.4 Executive. Have there been any highlights, any outstanding moments? Yeah, just about all of them. But I would say the, the test facility at Geratec, when you're driving a high-speed car at high speed on the oval, is quite an experience and one that you're not likely to forget in Ari. I remember in presenting um, asking Robin to please let me know who's going to win and he wouldn't and, and it was a, a marvellous sensation when the winner was announced. And then I think every single year the announcement of the car of the year is always fantastic. I still remember one of the first cars of the year I attended uh, was at Gold Reef City and more than 20, 20 years ago and there was two strong contenders, I won't name them. Uh, but they were German containers, and uh, I can't say they were premium brands, maybe they were just big cars. But these two were really up uh, that year to win it, and uh, there was this fantastic reveal with smoke and all the things came out of this mine shaft, and suddenly, you know, the car appeared and you could just see the lights, and the one person jumped up and he started shouting, you know, yes, yes, yes! And as the car became more visible, it was the competitor's car. And, uh, you know, this guy just, I felt so sorry for him, but it was very, <laughs> extremely funny at that stage. <laughs> because it was one of those real, yes, 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 that turned completely into a disappointment. And uh, in any case, uh, years after that, they won. And then they could shout, yes, yes, yes. The winning car doesn't win based on a singular feature. It has to score highly in its class across a variety of categories. The hallmarks of a Coty winner is 
festival excellence. Excellence in all aspects of the car. Science, technology and impact. Engineering excellence. That it exceeds your expectations. But it's really about how it shines above its competitors in that segment. It just has to be fabulous. That is the core of the year. The first five years of the current decade have seen interesting developments and renewed excitement in cars and technology. Engines are becoming smaller and more powerful. It's actually quite fascinating to be driving a huge car or a, a fairly big sized bodywork and it's uh, driven by a 1.5 litre or at most a 2 litre and you get incredible power outputs. We marked the decade with the following winners. In 2010, the Volkswagen Golf 6 1.4 TSI 90 kW comfort line. 2011 gave us the competition's first set of winners with both the BMW 530D and VW Polo 1.6 TDI 77 kW comfort line taking top spot. The reveal that stands out for me over the years and will stand out for the rest of my days is the, in 2011 when we ended up with two winners. Um, I looked at the TV footage of it later. The silence when the two cars appeared on the stage and nothing else happened lasted for 47 seconds. Um, that is a very long time to have absolute silence in the hall. In 2012, the Hyundai Elantra 1.8 GLS manual was the first Korean car to win the South African Car of the Year title. It also won Car of the Year titles in North America and the Philippines. In 2013, it was the turn of the Porsche Boxster, the ultimate feat of engineering and art. There have been a couple of game changer vehicles in the competition over the years. I think the most prominent of them has certainly been the Porsche Boxster, uh, that, that I wouldn't say that set a different trend, um, but it certainly opened up the competition to a different type of vehicle. And in 2014, the Porsche Cayman S was both the second sports car and the second Porsche to win the South African Car of the Year award. And in 2015, the Porsche Macan S Diesel pulled a phenomenal feat becoming the first SUV to claim the coveted prize, as well as making Porsche the first brand in the history of the competition to win the prestigious award three years in a row. To win uh, this prestigious award uh, three years in a row, after never having won it for 28 years, it's really incredible. Well, the Porsche Macan represents a quantum leap forward in the, in the SUV, the sport utility vehicle market, in that it combines seemingly impossible areas. It gives you a sports car, it gives you a family car, and it gives you a 4x4. So it's got the Porsche genes. 30 years ago, there were only seven car brands in the country. Today, there are more than 50 car brands with a mix of over 2,900 models for the public to choose from. From the Toyota Corolla Twin Cam in 1986 to the Porsche Macan S Diesel in 2015, much has changed, but the enduring commitment of the industry has remained the same. It is all thanks to the knowledge, expertise and passion of the people represented here today. I think uh, the success of the car of the year over the last 30 years is number one has been its consistency of judging and the reveal etc. A big point has been ha having Westbank as our sponsor. It's lovely to have a sponsor behind you, nothing's too much travel for and they're really involved. The Coty sponsorship between Westbank and the guilds has been one of the longest sponsorships in corporate history in South Africa and I think it's worked well because we've both been very committed and Westbank as a sponsor has been involved. We've been intricately involved in every single year of the Coty Awards to make sure that it's a success and to make sure that it epitomizes the professionalism of our industry. I don't think it could have been anyone else. I don't think any sponsorship could have lasted through, I can remember, five CEOs who all participated 
and got into it strong. Um, without that, it wouldn't work. And of course, it has become ritual that West Bank forecasts motor vehicle sales at this glittering event. For me, the car of the year is the face of the industry and it demonstrates to the outside world just what a world-class industry we are here in South Africa. It's also the only time that all the industry executives get together in one place. It's truly a very special evening. I think West Bank has, has really driven it into a, a really nice niche. We look forward to a long and successful future for the South African Car of the Year. But of course, just because we've been successful over the last 30 years, doesn't mean that we can rest on our laurels. I think it's very important that the competition remains relevant for all the major stakeholders, especially the Guild themselves, all the sponsors, and all the OEMs that participate. This is the spirit that drives the competition. This is the mighty heart that will power us into the next 30 years of amazing cars, partnerships and excellence in motoring. Thank you all. West Bank salutes your passion. We salute you.